Hello and welcome to the first session of the templates overview that come with Stingray. In this first session we're going to discuss the empty template and the basic template. So when you first load up your editor you will have a templates tab here in your project manager and from here you can create new templates based off of new projects based off of these templates that we ship with the engine. The uh, empty template of course is very empty and we'll go over that. There's not much to it. It's a very good place to start from scratch, especially if you're a programmer. The basic template has a few things in it and a character and a level you can walk around and some very basic things. Uh, the character template has uh, a fully functional character with an animation controller and can fire a weapon and run around similar to a first person shooter. The vehicle template has a fully drivable vehicle with full vehicle physics. And the VR template, of course, covers currently the Oculus Rift and integration into Stingray. So let's first start by opening the empty template, which I can do by adding these as existing templates to my project launcher here if I just want to launch one that's already existing, or I could create a new one here and open that one. So for this purpose, I'm just going to open the existing template here. So if I open the empty template, it will load up. And as we see, it's opened with an empty level. There's not much here. The intent of this uh, template is to be empty so that there is not much going on. And if you go to your window and open your script editor, which I'm going to dock down here at the bottom, you can then use your asset browser going into the script folder and open either one of these two Lua projects in your script editor here, as you can see. Or you can use an external editor to edit our Lua scripting. I use Sublime. So if we look at this folder structure for empty, there's nothing in the content folders. We have very little in the, in the script folder here at the project level. There is a project.lua, but you can see that everything in here is commented out. This is a good place to start if you're creating a project from scratch and you want very unique custom features to your own project. You can look in here, there's quite, uh, it's quite well documented. You can read some of the commented out or you can uncomment things that you'd like to add into your project, etc. This reaches back to a core app kit folder that we have in the engine. Um, that's where a lot of the stuff that we define with, with Lua exists. So that's what this empty project is going to run from by default. You can override those settings, of course, at your own project level. If we look at the boot package for this, which is in the root directory of this, this is just telling us what we're going to load when we load up this project. There's a boot package for every project. So this is going to load your HUD, your debug, it's going to load any levels that you may have. It's going to reach back to this core app kit I was just talking about and some of the plugins that we have like WIs for audio and human IK. This will also load any script level Lua files that you've created in your project. It does load the basic camera from the core and it has a basic sky dome and any of the app kit units that live in our core. As you can see, this is a good place to start if you want nothing at all. There's not much going on here. It's a very simple. It will run and play, and that's about all that you're going to get. So if you come up here to this green button, which is our test level, and you hit play, you should get a window that will pop up here, and this is your level. You have basic mouse control and WASD control to fly around the scene, and if you hit escape, you will back out of it. Currently, if you run project, which would be running any of your menus or UIs other than your level, you'll get a black screen on this empty level because that has not been set up for an empty level. Moving on to the basic template, which is one step up from empty, we can go to our project manager again, and you can see that I have basic in here, so I will select it and open that up. The back end of the engine will close and we'll open up the basic project here. If you haven't compiled this already, the first time that you open it, it will take a few seconds to compile. As you see, it also has opened a empty level. There's nothing in here. If we go and check now on this level though and do an open level, we have a main menu for our menu and we have basic for our basic level. So if we open that basic level, you can see here as we fly around, we have a very simple floor, a grid that you can toggle on and off with the G key. There's a box in the center. We have a reflection cube that helps us with our reflections and our lighting and we have a dominant directional light here that works our lighting and shadows. For the lighting, you can see that over here on the right we have a shading panel. You can get to that if it's not open by default under Window, Lighting, 
shading that will open up this panel. You can use the level settings or you can use saved settings. If you use saved settings, you can see that they've kind of changed here in my window now. This is what we save in the core. These are the defaults. So if you use the level settings, now all of these grayed out features are available to you and you can change them. Sky dome intensity, if you want it to be brighter, you can make that brighter and you can see that that will change in the level. You can also grab your light directly. You could go to the property editor for your light and you can see that it has rotation values set on it and it's dominant directional. So we can move that ourselves in the level and you can see as the shadows will change or you can do it manually on the side in the shading panels. For this purpose of this video, this is just an overview. So we won't get into uh, too deep into the property editors or the lighting editors or the shading about it, um, for each level. But once you get into those, uh, those values, you can see that they're very powerful and there's lots of different settings that you can set. So in our asset browser for this under content, we have the basic levels. This is your basic level in your main menu. You can get to that through the menu or through the um, content browser. We also have a material folder with a few basic materials that we have. You can see that that cube is yellow if I select yellow. On the right now I can now edit this color. I can change the color if I like right here in real time or I can make this unique. And if I do make it unique, I can then double click and open this and I will have a shader graph that I can edit. This is the same shader graph that you'll find in Max and Maya that correlate directly into Stingray. For our models, we have basic props folder that will have our wall and our box. If we go back a level, we have our basic floor. And then in the character folder here, we just have a cube that we're gonna use. Now, if you open up this capsule, this opens up the unit editor. Inside of the unit editor, we have a basic simple structure here for our character. We have our character mesh. We have a, an eye height uh, socket a node, and we have a root node. We've also created a physics actor. If we go into view physics actor, we have this physics actor over here on the right. And this lets me set up an actor that is the same size as my cylinder and I change the node to character. The actor template is keyframe because we want it to move around and the mesh type is mesh. The shape template is character so that he will trigger um, different uh, triggers in the level if we have that. We also have a mover which is a body and this is going to be the same size as our capsule and under the collision we have default and we have a slope radius and a slope limit so that we know where he can move. We have set this guy to be invisible by default, so if we play the level, the level will launch. And right now I'm just in a free cam and I can fly around with my WASD controls. Now if I hit the F2 key, as you can see in the bottom right on the UI, I will fall and I am now playing as that capsule and I'm in a walking mode and I can hit spacebar to jump. Or I can double jump and I will keep going. We didn't put any constraints on this. You can hop up on your cube. Gravity is in effect. If you hit F2, you will bounce back out to your camera and you can fly around. If you hit escape, you're out of the level. If we run the project, I don't want to save my level changes. If we run the project, we will get this main menu. This is a static menu. We can start. And it's basically the same thing now. If we hit F2, we're the character. If we hit Escape, we're back to the main menu where we can quit out. You can find this main menu by going into your Content UI folder. And in here, we'll have all the basic settings for your UI. Here's the simple menu. So if we want to open this, we can just double click. I have some resolution issues with my screens as I have a three or four screens hooked up to a laptop so we'll get some flashing here as it adjusts my resolution. We'll allow access here and you can see that this is going to be the simple main menu for Scaleform Studio. Click OK. Let's get back here to my main menu. So this is our main menu. We have a simple scene up here. For those of you familiar with Scaleform, we're not going to get too in-depth, but this is a main static menu. These are our modules and our boxes that you can reach back to with our containers that we reach back to through some very simple UI scripting 
that allows us to have a main menu and load the level and exit the level. So this is where the uh, menus live in Scaleform Studio. So if we close out of here, and we get back to the main editor. That pretty much covers the empty template and the basic template overview. These are really good places to start if you'd like to uh, begin with your own kind of custom thing and you just want to figure out how some of the basic stuff works and you'd like to start creating your own custom game. In the next session, we'll move on to the character template and get more into depth of how we would set up an animated character, a weapon, and how that works in Stingray.